why haven't you been able to convince the medical industry, universities, government, the USDA, medical journals, nutritionists, dietitians, doctors, media, and other sources of influence that a whole food plant-based diet should, uh, should there be a foundation uh, for what they recommend to the public? It's a long haul. It's a long haul. The question is, you know, why, why, why that difficulty? Uh, I might mention, uh, for one, uh, the film, Plant Pure Nation. There was the uh, Forks of Eyes. I was in that, as you know. And so we was telling our story, Dr. S and I in particular. Uh, but then the question rose, well, that question you just raised, why haven't we heard this before? That led to the Plant Pure Nation. My oldest son, using the same producer, uh, created the film. Getting into the political kind of conundrum, that kind of question. And on that, and on that point, um, I, it really comes back to almost a political question, certainly a socioeconomic question, without a doubt. Uh, but we have uh, politicians that are elected to, according to what people want. That, that's pretty common sense stuff. Uh, but in any case, uh, the, the, the politicians are going along with what people want. And so for, therefore, in the case of the dietary guidelines, they're not really uh, coming out with the kind of, they're not, they don't have the structure, structure to share this really good information because it's too much oriented to the animal industry. Um, politicians appoint, uh, obviously, the Secretary of Agriculture, who is uh, usually involved in a rotating door, resolving door kind of situation with the ag industry. So, it's really hard to stray from that model. First, it's what people want, they think they want. Secondly, it's the producers themselves who want to keep their business rolling. That's a, that's a tough thing to, to, to deal with. Uh, in the case of uh, the pharmaceutical industry, the health industry, which come to rely, as we started in the beginning, rely on the use of drugs as a means of, of uh, keeping us well, curing our illness. Yeah, sure, they, they do work. I mean, that's, I'm not. I'm not sure why anti blood just at all. They, they can work, but to use them as the mainstay of health is nonsense. It's nonsense. But again, it's a huge industry. So to some, come along and say, hey, why don't we talk about food? Why don't we, why don't we just sit, let's sit down and talk about it. Let's, I, I can say to people, why don't you just try and stay on it for a little bit and see what you get. People tend not to want to do that too hard. All kinds of good and sufficient, I wouldn't say good, but certainly sufficient reasons. So I can understand that kind of behavioral pattern, uh, but it's not to their best interest. And uh, one, one more thing, comment I might make on, on that point. As we switch from a whole, to a whole food beverage diet, those who wish to try that, one of the things that people often discover is they, ah, I can't quite handle it. You know, they give up after a while. This is it's not for me. They go, if we wait, for if these folks are away for two or three months, just really stick with it if they really want to do it. Uh, their taste preferences change. That's what happens. And so, I mean, I can speak from personal experience and many of my friends and colleagues say the same, same thing. If you start eating this way, the first thing you know, believe it or not, as crazy as it sounds, we crave a salad. I mean, I, I would never say that. You're, years ago. But you know, you, you really get to the point where you're feeling good. Things are working out pretty pretty well. If we had some moments that they kind of disappeared. You know, and then it's kind of nice to feel good. And uh, and then recognize too that in order to get into this kind of beating, a little bit of patience. A little bit of patience. Uh, and just kind of keeping that. And there's other issues too that uh, they're great they're sort of influencers, uh, like for example, why do we kill all the animals we do? This is going to be an animal welfare issue. It's a pretty powerful argument, uh, you know, for a lot of folks, uh, or environmental issues. You know, so there's other um, externalities that surround us that really kind of fits into the same same picture. Come down, just let's eat the right food. 
why is it so hard to get medical schools to teach nutrition? And why don't they teach the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet? Is it because the evidence isn't strong enough? Well, in my new book, The Future of Nutrition, which just came out, I deal, try to deal with that question. And I deal with it from a historical perspective initially. But then talking about what I learned in the history, going back to the 1700s, by the way, what I learned, uh, and this I did while I was spending a, a year at the University of Oxford with my colleagues there when we were working with China study. But in any case, I got into the history and found something that was really fascinating, really fascinating. Back in 1800, late 1700s, into the 1800s, uh, in the case of cancer, because that was more my specialty, if you will, uh, I learned that there were two main theories of cancer formation and presumably cancer treatment. One, one said that cancer is a local disease. And I just cut it out. You can imagine who thought that way. It was the surgeons. Uh, so they, they looked at cancer as a difficult but manageable disease, just cut it out. That was called a local theory of disease. Okay. In contrast to that, there was another theory called the constitutional nature of disease. Constitutional nature. That phrase, constitutional nature, infers something about a whole body reacting in, in, this, in this way. Uh, and things working together, if you will. Well, it turned out that, that this really took hold uh, firmly in the middle 1800s uh, and then carried on into the Industrial Revolution, late, late 1800s. At that time, the local theory of disease then uh, uh, was really pretty well established. That's what, that's what everybody locked into. It's, you know, we could talk about something specific, maybe something definitive, something scientific. So radiation came into play. We could make narrow beams of radiation kill cancer cells. Chemotherapy came into play. We can devise drugs, you know, to treat the cancer cells. So uh, all of that was local, 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 focus, 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 I call it reductionism. One thing at a time. You know, that makes money. That makes money because if you, in fact, in the, the evolution of uh, intellectual property protection of business ventures, you know, to get a patent, for example, you gotta be able to describe it. If it's local theory and you're talking about a single chemical or a single thing like this, it's, it's uh, amenable to getting patents, you know, trademarks, you know, so copy, what, whatever the ideas. And so we focus on this one thing at a time. That then became the substance uh, of almost of a nutrition way. Because then nutrition, we were, were learning about food in the late 1800s, early 1900s. We got to a point where we could isolate certain nutrients, became known as vitamins. Each one supposedly dealing with one particular disease. That became the hallmark of nutrition. So nutrition became a, 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 a science that was a very reductionist. Looking at one nutrient at a time, that's why we studied them. We put them in pills and we sold them that way. You know, it's a $50 billion industry, essentially. We, we only assume that this is a way to get the benefits of food. Well, it turns out this doesn't work that way. I hate to say. The way nutrition, the way food works, the way food works is not through individual nutrients sort of doing their independent things. No, it's everything working together in a marvelous way. That brings me back to the constitutional of nature argument again. Because now we see with this food and other things that go on around it, you know, with, with that at the same time, we see that nutrition is a constitutional order of disease. That's what was discussed in 1800. That was dropped. That was essentially dropped. Because for one thing, it didn't fit the economic model. But I would argue the constitutional nature of disease is what we can use as individuals. That's our game. As individuals, if we start recognizing that, we can then take care of a lot of our issues ourselves. We don't need to rely on getting sick and having somebody uh, poke some chemicals into us to try to make us well. Just, and that's, that's nutrition. Nutrition is a holist concept, everything working together. Eat the whole food. 
And in the process, by the way, one, one, I, I come down to two simple arguments. To keep it really simple, but acknowledge the complexity. I want to acknowledge the complexity. That's extremely important. But at the same time, I want to get the message simple. Two things. Eat whole food. Everything's, but when, what I mean by that, it, what, it's not the nest. You can chop it up, you can cook it, you can do this and that, but it's the idea of eating the, everything in, in that whole food more or less simultaneously so that the body gets a chance to react to the total mix and work with it that way. Nature is amazing that way. So eat whole food. The second is make it plants. Make it plants. So we haven't talked about that here that much, but my real specialty in my career was really the question concerning protein. And I've come to learn <laughs> that that protein, there's animal protein, there's plant protein. Animal proteins, all different kinds, they tend to do the same thing. They increase blood cholesterol. They do a few other things, a bunch of different mechanisms. They cause cells to divide faster. They increase growth hormone. They do this, they do that. They, they restrict DNA repair. They restrict formation of the more than modern day things, natural killer cells, which are part of the immune system. Animal protein does all that stuff. Plant proteins don't. Plant proteins got the antioxidants. Vitamin E, vitamin C, you know, a bunch of phytochemicals. They're, they're, they're in fibrous materials. That's all good stuff. <coughs> and so animal food, I don't see any, we do not need to get protein from animal food for starters. A lot of people think we do. No, we don't. We do not. We get plants got all the protein we need. And in fact, it's, it's the right kind of protein. So I wish you get off that kick of uh, assuming that, as I once did, <laughs> that you know we need protein. Of course we need protein. Protein is really important. It's a nutrient. But you know, from animals, it makes no sense. Just, you know, Make it, so two things, eat whole food. Number two, make it plants. And if people just did that, forget about all the other details, you know, not, not completely forget them, but, you know, pay less attention to the, the little detailed uh, information that people tend to get. And just, if they really rely on just that, we could solve, I would, my guess is easily 90% of our health problems. We can get the other 10% by doing some specialty things, maybe. But in any case, just, just eat the whole food. Can you imagine what would happen to the world in terms of healthcare costs? Wow. It would plummet. We're going to lose jobs in the process, but we have, we have other things that we can do to help ourselves, too, to create some new jobs for that purpose. And so, you know, it. it it, uh, the, the idea to me is uh, it reaches into the economics and into the political, the social, uh, behavioral, ethical uh, points of view, all servicing the same thing. Eat whole food, make sure they're plants. That's it. We can take some good things out of the plants, maybe like they're so-called salt, sugar, and fat. They're all, you know, all interesting, good things. But you know those three things, be careful about adding them back. They're addictive, all three. You get some, the more you get, the more you want. And they do have some special properties that are not good. If we overdo it. So, but you know, I, I think. And that way, for, for me, that enables me to say something pretty simple. You know, eat what grains you want. Eat what, what grains you want. You know, there's a variety of tubers. There's a variety of legumes. Mix and match, there's infinite combinations. Different ethnic cuisines, too. You can, we can still adopt the different ethnic cuisines because they just, tend to distinguish themselves by their flavors, as we all know. So, you know, spices and herbs and flavors can kind of help us along in this journey. And we can maintain the uh, different ethnic cuisines and they have it. 